Hi there and welcome back to the Der Grenadier YouTube channel or should I say the Der Flieger YouTube channel for another video. Today I'm wearing a new outfit. This is going to be a impression video that I'm going to show you very soon. But first we are going to talk about Militärräder. But first we're going to talk about Militärräder and Truppenfahrräder. So, first off, it is very important to know the difference between a militairreder and a troepenvaarraad. This is not a troepenvaarraad. A troepenvaarraad is built for the Wehrmacht and it, uh, it qualifies for certain uh, aspects that are specific to them. This is a militairreder and militairreder are bikes that are taken from the street, taken from people, taken from factories, taken from countries and converted for Wehrmacht use or just used as they are. And we are going to talk about that a little bit more. Because for this bike to be a uh, Truppenfahrrad, it would need the following things. Of course, this bike does have some parts that you would consider Truppenfahrrad. It has the Mantelhalter on the steering wheel for your uh, Zeilbaan or your mantel or both. It has the uh, ammunition slash grenade box in the frame and it has the palace rack on the back but it would need some different things as well for example it would need the quick release right here for the steering wheel it would need to be a certain manufacturer which this one is not Victoria is not one of the brands that made Truppenfarade for the Wehrmacht if I'm correct it would need a different lamp the lamp that you can take off with the battery in it, a different uh, dynamo in front, it would need a different saddle, a different frame, so it's impossible to just convert any bike to be a Truppenfahrrad. Now you might be wondering if this is a Militärräder, why does it have so many parts that are considered parts of Truppenfahrrad? That is because when I bought this bike, I did not know the difference. I just thought that every bike with the ammunition box and with the handlebar and mantelhalter, I would consider it a military uh, uh, Truppenfahrrad. I would consider it a German military bike, which of course it is, but it's not a Truppenfahrrad, it's a Militärräder, because it's not built for the Wehrmacht. If you want a bike and you want a real Truppenfahrrad, uh, I would suggest buying a correct frame, which is a little bit more expensive, uh, and don't use the handlebars, uh, the mantelhalter, and the grenade box if it's just a militairreder. If you want a militairreder, so a civilian bike, uh, push into Wehrmacht service, which is uh, way easier to do correctly, I would su suggest just using the palace rack on the back. Just as there are laws for bikes on the road these days, Germany had the same thing. You needed certain things on your bike to be able to ride on the road without being pulled over and getting a ticket. One of those things is a front lamp. You need a front lamp that works. You need light on your bike, but just on the front. You also see lights on the back, but they are not required if you have a rear reflector and the rear part of the fender is painted white. This made uh, sure that cars that would come from the back would see there was a bike in front of them. But you don't need the lamp on the back. Also, you need to be able to stop your bike, of course. Uh, so you need a brake system on the back of the bike, which is a brake that is activated by pushing the pedals backwards. Also you need a stamp brake on the front, which is why you have this system. It doesn't do that much, I must admit, but it was required by law. The last thing that you need is a bell. Also for safety, 
you need to be able to make sure that people know you are coming. And that was all. Just safety measures that were required on German bikes in Germany. So not on captured bikes used by the Wehrmacht in, for example, the Netherlands, France, etc. Now you might be wondering, do I need all those lights and all those bells and all those brakes on my bike? No, you don't. You can just use a bare frame with wheels if you want. If you want, you don't even need a saddle. Just leave it. You can use the bare minimum because the Wehrmacht did as well. If you have a bike with just a steering wheel, two wheels, a frame and a saddle, that's more than enough. Front fenders don't need them. Lamps don't need them. Rear rack don't need them. Lights, reflectors, pouches, you don't need them. You see bikes used all the time that are just the bare minimum. This is for uh, people that needed good bikes, uh, reconnaissance units, they might use a little bit more sophisticated bikes, but just as a stolen bike, stolen, uh, taken from the people, uh, you don't need all that stuff. Now we are going to take an in-depth look of the parts that I put on here and how I built this bike. We are going to start with the front and work our way to the back. First off, the headlamp, an original Bosch Rotodin, Rotodin headlamp, functioning of course with the original Dynamo, also Bosch Rotodin. On the front fender, the original Victoria fender emblem. The mantel halters are reproductions that I bought second hand and they are stamped. They are way thicker than originals, but they do their job pretty well. The front stamp brake was missing on this bike when I bought it and I replaced it with a reproduction from Velo Classic in Germany. When installing it, you need to wash out that it will pass in between of the holder for the headlamp. All the cables on this bike are post-war field telephone cable, uh, which is really sturdy. Uh, I had to do double wires because the ground grounding on this bike is really bad. Also, give the cable some room around here because when turning the steering wheel, uh, it will tighten. If you it's tight already, you won't be able to turn the steering wheel, and the cables will break. The pump is a reproduction, new old stock, from Velo Classic in Germany. The ammunition box is from Army Zedar, quite expensive and not as quality wise, not so good quality wise as the originals, but very much usable and I keep an aluminum ammunition box in here with some spare parts and tools. The tool pouch is an original torpedo tool pouch for which I made new straps. And I have a few tools in there but nothing special. The saddle I replaced with a more period correct type, also vintage, it's a Dutch Lepper saddle. When installing a saddle to your Truppenfahrrad, make sure it has the springs above the frame and not the springs underneath, uh, because those you ne almost never saw on these types of bikes. The palace rack on the back here 
is made of salt by uh, Nestof and it does not come with the bottom holders, the brackets, which I made myself. The rear light is an original one, but not a matching set with the front lamps. And on the back we've got the original Victoria emblem and a rear reflector. So, that's all I have for you today. I hope this was enough information for you. There is going to be a video in the future with all the equipment on here, uh, showing you how to pack the thing, how to take it with you, how, how I take it with me to events, how I use it on events, stuff like this. But this is just a video for the bike on itself, some laws and things like that. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you have questions, feel free to ask. And I wish you all a very nice weekend. Auf Wiedersehen!